Good morning. How are you today? Uh, thanks for joining us for another episode of Garden Side Chats. Uh, my name is Carrie. Um, welcome to my garden on a beautiful Friday morning. So today we're going to talk about um, some more garden pests. You know, and in, in you know a gardener's life, there you know it's a constant battle between preserving the vegetables and fruits that you're growing in your garden. Um, from the kind of onslaught of insects, mammals, birds, you know, other things that also want to eat them. So right off the bat, one of the very first things I can tell you is uh, you should always just plant more than you think you're going to need because that gives you a little bit of insurance as far as, um, you know, making sure some, you know, understanding that some of the things you grow are going to be consumed by pests, um, be it insect or avian or mammalian. Um, so today we're going to talk about two particular pests that we haven't talked about yet, I don't think. Uh, we're going to talk about squash, vine borers, and squirrels. So kind of uh, two different, you know, things. So squash vine borers are a uh, the caterpillar is what does damage to your squash plants, your gourds, pumpkins. Um, but the moth, uh, the adult version of that caterpillar is more um, observable in your garden. They're very hard to catch, but it's a little bit cool this morning. So I was able to find one on a squash plant and catch it before it could fly away. So. Also, without intending to, accidentally caught a squash bug um, from the same plant. But we're not really going to talk about squash bugs today because we've already talked about them. So, squash bug is kind of the guy that's on top of the... It's the one that's moving around more. The squash vine borer is black and it's, it's right here. It's got kind of like a rusty like patch on its abdomen. It's got some orange on its legs. It is a moth. Um, it may look like an unconventional moth uh, since it doesn't have really wide wings. Um, there's a few identifying factors like the antenna identified as a moth, but that's unnecessary information right now. Um, so what this little guy does um, is it lays eggs on squash plants and the caterpillars that hatch from these eggs burrow into the stem of squash plants. Um, and as they burrow in, they kind of eat the interior of the squash plant and um, in doing so kind of mess up the vascular system of the plant. Um, so what will happen is the plant will just kind of start wilting pretty, you know, like out of nowhere, all of a sudden it'll just start wilting. Um, and ultimately they usually die. So, you know, there are other viruses and bacteria that cause uh, squash plants to wilt pretty, pretty quickly. So what are ways that you can identify that it's squash vine borer versus say like bacterial wilt? Um, so there's a couple, couple little tricks. So let's move over to a squash plant that I do not believe has any vine borer damage, but I can at least show you what you should be looking for. So here's one of my squash plants. It's like got squash bugs all over it. So just don't, oh my gosh, they're everywhere. Don't pay any attention to the squash bugs. So here's kind of where the stem meets the soil. It's kind of, kind of ugly, you know. It's late August, so it's been here since May, so it's had a nice long life. So here's, here's the soil, here's the stem, here's some superficial roots. So the squash vine borer will make lesions right here in the stem. And they'll be, um, they won't go this way, they'll go vertically. And what will look like is, it'll look like there's sawdust on the lesion. And that, that sawdust looking stuff is actually the inside of the 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 squash plant that's being like pooped out by the caterpillar and so the caterpillar is you know burrowing up into the vine of the squash plant eating the vascular system messing up the vascular system 
and you know living its best life. So the reason why the squash plant wilts is because it can no longer get water from its roots to its leaves and things like that. The vascular system's physically s severed. So in normal circumstances, it's really hard to catch and kill the uh, adult version, the moth. And it's also just really hard to, you know, keep up with eggs that are laid and stuff. They're really hard to see and identify. So what are ways you can protect your squash um, from the squash fine borer? There's a couple things you can do that I've done with varying success, you know. Um, one thing is you can wrap the the stem when the plant is young, like much younger than this, like, you know, when it's about this tall, with aluminum foil. And that physically keeps the squash vine borer from the stem so it can so it cannot lay its eggs and you know do its damage another thing that one of my neighbors does is puts an old can around um, the base of his squash so the can has the top and the bottom cut off so it's just the metal cylinder and then you put that in the ground a little bit put your seed in that and then your plant goes or grows around it um, and that's also, in theory, a way to physically keep the squash vine borer off of the stem of your plant. Um, in my experience with really either of those two methods, the plant will grow. It grows this way and this way. Um, so you really got to, especially with the aluminum foil method, you really got to make sure you don't um, essentially girdle the plant, which is putting something around the stem so tightly that um, it kind of like mushrooms out on either side because that could also hurt the vascular system. Um, you want it to be loose enough, for, so you might have to loosen it over a course of weeks. Um, so it's definitely not hands-off, but that's one way to protect the stem of the squash fine borer. Um, I would say, in my experience, squash fine borers um, attack summer squash plants and winter squash plants more than they do like gourds or cucumbers or anything. Um, and this is a little late in the season to be protecting your plants against squash vine borers. I just wanted to talk about it because I found one and they're kind of hard to find. Um, but this is something you want to implement, you know, from the out, right out of the gates and next gardening season when you plant your squash plants. But it, uh, the information is also helpful if like you're starting to see like sawdust around your plants and they're starting to wilt. Now you know what it is. If you find um, evidence of squash vine borer on your plants, some people can have had success like going up in the stem with a knife and cutting it and getting the little vine borer out. Um, you can try that if the damage hasn't been too bad yet. You might be able to save the plant that way by physically like pulling the little grub, the little caterpillar out of the, out of the stem. But um, you also risk just cutting the plant in the stem more. Um, so, so that's squash vine borers. Um, if you have any questions about squash vine borers, squash bugs, cucumber beetles, any of the dozens of insects that predate on summer squash, please let us know. Um, and we'd love to, you know, answer your questions about that. But now we're going to move to another cucurbit in my garden that is experiencing predation from a different pest. This one is from squirrels. So let's let's go over here. All right. So this is a cute uh, pumpkin plant that I planted, um, and as you can see. Every single pumpkin, unfortunately, has some pretty gnarly damage from that originates from squirrels. You know, and at first I was like, you know, it's okay. They can have one. And it just kept happening. So it's really gotten out of control. I think that might be all the pumpkins. Oh, there's one over there, but I think you get the point. Um, so I have this big deer fence in my garden. I have, you know, I visit my garden every day and try to really take care of it. But you know, squirrels are, 
squirrels can be a pretty rough pest. A lot of people talk about squirrels damage to their tomatoes. Um, I luckily have not had that issue, but my pumpkins are where they're getting. And on a side note, it's like just eat one whole pumpkin. Don't like ruin parts of all of the pumpkins. So anyway, they don't care. So what am I doing about this? So I have one pumpkin here and I have a little baby pumpkin right here that I think still might do something. Can you see that? It's right here, a little guy. Um, so what did I do? Well, actually I got this idea from my neighbors who garden in the same larger garden that I do. They put um, really thin uh, pillowcases over their pumpkins. And so I just got this old t-shirt from an old job I had and I put it around this young pumpkin to physically deter the uh, squirrel from biting through the rind to get you know to the fruit and I figured okay um, if I can keep the squirrel from like biting you know into the pumpkin I can protect the pumpkin and it's just loosely kind of draped over the pumpkin so as the pumpkin grows and expands I can you know kind of readjust the t-shirt and keep it protected these are personal pie pumpkins so they'll get maybe twice as big three times as big as this so they're not going to be huge and I'm not really looking for getting, you know, a ton of pumpkins. I just actually had a pie pumpkin and I buried it in the ground and this is what grew out of it. Um, so I just was doing it more for fun than getting the pie pumpkins. But uh, squirrels definitely wreak havoc, especially at this time of year. They're kind of like their brain has gone into like haywire mode. You know, they're starting to bury bury things for winter and fall and they're starting to like you know put on some weight and they're just kind of going crazy right now so with these pumpkins i want to try to protect what i can so they don't just like continue to indiscriminately maim all of my pumpkins if you had tomato damage with your squirrels and your tomatoes this really this technique really wouldn't work so well the best thing i would tell you with the tomatoes we can go over to the tomatoes is um, just harvest them a little a little greener um, in my experience it seems like um, squirrels like really ripe fruit because they kind of want the juice from the fruit so if you pick a tomato that's still pretty on the green side let's see if I can find one I've kind of let my tomatoes go So if you pick a tomato like on this stage, or even maybe a little bit greener, and just bring it in and put it on your counter, you don't want to refrigerate it, uh, just put it on your counter, it will still ripen, but you'll be able to harvest it before the squirrels get to it. So actually I generally do not wait for the tomatoes on my, my plants to ripen all the way just because um, inevitably they'll split and then ants will come or squirrels will take bites or birds, even, like everything wants a tomato. Um, so I definitely tend to harvest them on the immature side and let them ripen fully. Um, and that's probably your best bet against squirrel predation on your tomatoes, honestly, is harvest them a little bit green. So yeah, that was just kind of a, you know, snapshot of a couple fall garden pests. Um, in the case of the squash vine borer, it's a season long garden pest really. Um, but you know, there's always something to keep you on your toes in the gardening world. Um, if you have any questions about, you know, other damage that you're seeing to your plants and don't really know what's causing it, we can go and, you know, let us know. We can talk about how to identify what is causing damage to your plants. Um, other than that, thanks for joining us and we'll see you later.